be blunt, some of the information I found was because while in university, we had courses on the key figures of industrial design, and unfortunately none of the information stuck. It wasn't personal enough or relatable. So we're gonna present specific events to get you hyped. Maybe you research further, maybe not. But enough information will be presented to put you guys into the right mindset of what design is all about. 1893 wasn't that long ago. There are many similarities if we compare then to now. And our forefathers? No, please, don't leave me. They have already paved the way for us in this particular respect. Unfortunately, not much has changed in the scheme of it all. But I wouldn't worry too much about that. All that's needed of us is to not forget their achievements and to also acknowledge their mistakes so we can acknowledge our own. Time to level up. Sup guys, two guys, he's industrial design here. Today, we're gonna start a new segment called The Fathers of Industrial Design. So sit back, relax, grab a cigar, light it, puff puff pass it, and let's get to it. Raymond Lowy, born in Paris in 1893, he was the son of a Jewish journalist from Austria and a French mother. By the age of 15, he was already flexing his muscles and kicking ass with design of a model aircraft. That design won the Gordon Bennett Cup for model airplanes. By the way, he went on to cash in on his talent by commercially selling the plane and naming it the IA Row. World War I showed up in 1914, and during the war, he rose to attain the rank of captain. After the war, he went to go live in the good old US of A and worked as a window designer for department stores such as Macy's and Saks. He also worked as a fashion illustrator for Vogue. Hey, he's French. He's in his blood to dabble in the fashion community. <laughs> he received his first industrial design commission by contemporizing the appearance of a duplication machine. His work on the styling of a cold spot refrigerator for Sears Roebuck and Company established his reputation as an industrial designer. Now listen up, because this is where things start to get a little juicy. His key contributions to the industry and the community of industrial design starts right here. In 1939, Lloyd began work with a car company called Studebaker. The brand entered the automotive business with electric vehicles in 1902, then followed with gasoline ones in 1904. You see, many don't know this, but gasoline and electric started around the same time. One side just had darker ideas to make more money. While designing the Avanti, Lloyd put up a sign stating, Weight is the enemy. Working on this project gave him some opportunities to draw out stuff like the grill, which he argued, In this day and age of fuel shortages, you must eliminate weight. Who needs grills? Grills I always associate with sewers. Unfortunately, many people didn't fancy the grillless look, but it was ahead of its time. I mean the whole car in general. It was made of fiberglass to save weight, one of the first bottom breathers due to the lack of the grill. It was a front engine rear wheel drive, 240 horsepower V8, basically a sleeper for its time. <laughs> and also the way it was branded, it was branded as America's only four passenger high performance personal car. Damn. Personally, I love the look of this car. Proper American beauty. It feels like it paved the way for others without getting much credit though. As designers, it's important to look at moments like these and see if it can be related to our current time period. Can you guys think of any products that are pushing the boundaries of design but not getting proper recognition? If so, leave it in the comment section. We'll check it out. All right, let's wrap this video up. We like to keep things in bite-sized proportions here. I'm saving Raymond's work on locomotives for a separate video because it's pretty heavy, but I'll throw in one little last piece of coolness for you guys. You see, he did not design the GG1 electric locomotive for the Pennsylvania Railroad, but he did improve it. He changed the methods of bonding material from rivets to welding. This gave a way sleeker look. Boom! Enough of that for this video. Well, it's 2016, and what have we learned from Raymond? Two important things. First, if you can shed some weight of a product, do it to the absolute limit. And lastly, there will always be a shortage of gasoline. It's a flawed power source by default. And that's it. Did you guys want us to go deeper in any particular events? Are you hungry for more? Please let us know your thoughts and comment below. 
This is two guys teaching industrial design. Not to be confused with. You can either run from it or learn from it. Ah! Huh? We love what we do. And hey, we're all in this together. Peace.